Hello YouTube, my name is Danny Seely and I'd like to introduce you to my garden. So this plot behind me in April of 2017 is a bonfire site. I installed five no-dig beds and a small domestic polytunnel. And we're currently in winter so things are looking a little rough so bear with me. But this is where a lot of the magic happens. We have a large compost heap. As you can see, some burned up manure that's ready to be added to said compost heap. Oh, let's have a little sneaky peek in the polytunnel. So, in here, I have my winter salads and a load of organic garlic. It's getting a bit of a head start. I also have a small tray of artichoke seedlings that I'm planning on planting out. So this was, yes, April 2017. In April 2018, I extended the, the vegetable growing patch and the no dig beds into this area, which was our secondary bonfire site. Um, this has been incredibly productive this year. We've had tomatoes, sweet corn, Three sisters, in fact, so we had courgettes and beans too, basil, beetroots in between all of those rows. These beds were incredibly productive with fresh herbs in the white bell bar sinks. Uh, the beds have since been minimally tilled after having everything cleared. And garlic, uh, germador, a beautiful purple variety that we planted in there. Um, I'd now like to show you what happened halfway through this year. So in, in June of this year, I approached my neighbour um, and asked him if I could cultivate this plot. It's part of his garden, uh, which was not used. The grass was up to here, so I cut it all back. I'm currently installing the 13th from 14th bed right down the bottom there. And this year I've turned this into a commercial enterprise. I've started generating an income. I generated an income within the first month of acquiring the site because of the methods in which, in, that I've used. Uh, I mowed all the grass, laid cardboard, and then I formed beds with about 12 ton of topsoil. I've used wood chip for the walkways. Uh, I gave myself a month to prepare the land during which time all of my seedlings were starting off in the polytunnel next door. So I was cultivating almost immediately. Very exciting. So we've got radishes, sorrel, spinach, carrots, mustard, spring onions, fresh herbs such as coriander and basil, there's rocket, fine green beans, chard, kale, edible flowers, radicchio, lettuces, more beets, a spinach and lettuce, lettuce succession, more lettuce and more beets and now I'm finally adding probably two or three more beds here or I've got a lot of topsoil so I may even turn this into some kind of mandala herb garden I quite like the idea of. This plot is destined to become a building site so I may only have this for another year I may only have it up until spring next year but something tells me I have, I have a, a feeling I'll be working this land for another year at least. But when that does happen, let me show you this. <laughs> so, we are currently in November, the very end of November 2018. Uh, last month it was confirmed that I have access to a third of an acre of this six acre paddock which has been previously used for grazing uh, pastured beef cows, beef cattle. Um, since that <laughs> confirmation, this fence here has been put up specifically to, to keep the cows in their paddock 
um, by me having this plot, it means that one less cow goes to slaughter every year, perhaps even two, as I've reduced the amount of space that the farmer gets to use for his dairy herd, for his, for his beef herd, and acquired a fair of an acre to start my garden. Gardener, whichever you prefer. Um, we had some very strong winds last night, so I don't know if you can see it just down the bottom there. Some of the tarp has blown off. But this tarp has held tight for a good month already. Yeah, you can see here, but look at the work it's doing. Look at the colour difference in that grass all along this area here. Super yellow, the grass is dying back, the chlorophyll is leaving um, in time. I'm hoping within four months, so I can start cultivating in February, uh, the grass and all the weeds would die back, creating this rich hummus type layer under the black tarp, which will be generating heat, retaining moisture, but stopping it from getting too waterlogged. This is a better example where the wind took a little stronger hole at this end. But look at the colour difference. That is what I'm after. Very, very satisfying sight. Um, before the day is out, I will recover this. This is either mould or potentially networks of mycelium forming on the surface. You can see the, the grass is dying back all the way down this bed. I plan to have this is 50 metres by 4 metres here. There is no running water, so I plan to build sheds, uh, a workstation, perhaps um, some roofed compost heaps similar to the design in which Charles Dowding has adopted. He's got some nice compost heaps. All of those roofs will also double up as water catchment for the site. Uh, last week I bought a 30 foot by 18 foot polytunnel which will be going right there. Um, you're currently looking north, this is south. It's a free and perfect situ. The only drawback I feel is this quite high hedgerow to the east. I'm going to give permission to reduce it in height somewhat. Uh, I've got a friend who's a tree surgeon, that may be cheap. May do mates rates, you may be having a bad day and charging loads of money, so we'll look into that closer to the time as and when it's necessary. Uh, other plans include moving my bees over here, increasing the size of my apiary. Um, I'm going to be getting, I've currently got 10 hens that have just started laying today, um, so I plan on getting maybe 30 or 40, having a rotationally grazing.